Hello, and welcome to our continuing study on salvation. In the last lesson, we looked at the three major causes of confusion concerning salvation, and we saw that those causes were sin, Satan, and self. As we continue now with our study, we want to look at another cause that has brought confusion to understanding God's plan of salvation, and that is the misunderstanding or the misusing of words specifically words that pertain directly to salvation. We're going to look at seven critical words that we need to understand so that we can accurately understand what God is saying we must do in order to receive his precious gift of salvation. The first three words I'm going to group together because they come from the same root Greek word and they are referring to the same thing. I'll give you a verse of scripture for each word so you get some idea of the context that the word is being used in. Word number one is saved. It comes from sozo in the Greek. Acts 16.30, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That famous question made by the Philippian jailer. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The second word is salvation, soteria in the Greek. 1 Peter 1.9, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And the third word would be Savior, soter, from the same Greek word, as I said before, that saved and salvation comes from. And the verse is Luke 2.11, one we're all familiar with, especially around Christmas time, Luke 2.11, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. So our first three words are saved, salvation, and savior. They all, like I said, they all come from the same root word and are referring to the same thing. Here's the specific definitions. You really want to jot these down because it is very important that you understand this. Saved means to snatch from serious peril. To snatch away from serious peril. It means to keep alive or to pardon someone. Salvation means deliverance from sin, deliverance from danger, or deliverance from punishment. Deliverance from sin, danger, or punishment. It also refers to eternal deliverance from judgment and the punishment that is due to sin. That's salvation. And Savior is a deliverer, the one who is accomplishing the saving the salvation or the being saved. One who saves or delivers from danger or destruction. The one who takes you and brings you safely through a situation. That would be a savior. It is the individual that brings you safely through. And it's again very important here that we notice what it is that we are being saved from. What it is that God is referring our salvation to. If we don't properly understand this, we're not going to accurately understand what God is talking about. So let me re-emphasize, what is it that we are being saved from? We are being saved from serious peril. We are being saved from sin. We are being saved from danger. We are being saved from judgment, from God's judgment. We are being saved from the eternal punishment that is due to our sins. This is what God is saving us from. We are being saved from an eternal life separated from God in hell in the lake of fire. We are being delivered from the righteous judgment that God will bring against all sin in the end times when he calls us before him to be judged for sin. This is what salvation is referring to. This is what we are saved from. This is what we need a deliverer or a savior to get us out of this situation of eternal judgment by God for our sins. There are far too many people today that look at salvation much more in an earthly realm. Rather than eternity, they're looking at it on this part of their life, this side of heaven. Not looking towards the future, but now. And they're sort of looking at what is it that God can do for me right here now today on earth. This is what I want to get saved from. This is what I want salvation for. I want to be delivered from a trouble-free life here on earth. 
I have sickness, I have aches, I have pains. I want to be delivered from that. I don't want to have all the headaches and the problems and the trials and the tribulations that come here. I want to be delivered from poverty. I want to have a lot of money. I want to have new cars. I want to have a, a new home. I want to have a number of homes. I want all the fancy things. I want all the luxurious things that can come my way. I, want, I just have a miserable, rotten, downtrodden life, and I want to be delivered from that. I want to be saved from that. I just want a life of happiness. I want a life of prosperity. I want a life of health, wealth, and prosperity. That's what the gospel preachers have out there. And there's a lot of people preaching that message today, that that's what you come to Jesus for, that that's what Jesus can do for you, that this is why Jesus died on the cross, so you don't have to be sick anymore. You don't have to have any pain or suffering. You don't have to have any trials or tribulations in this world. That You just follow God and he'll pour you out a blessing. And everything will be marvelous and wonderful in this world. That is a false gospel. It is a false gospel that is preached by false preachers who just themselves want to simply live in a life of luxury and live off the money that you're sending them so that you can get that same life of luxury. When God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross of Calvary, he had eternity in mind. He didn't just simply have our life here on this planet. The, the measly 50, 60, 70, 80 years that we live here is absolutely nothing compared with eternity. Eternity, we're talking about eternity. Millions and billions and trillions of years. And when you pass that, you're just starting to count. I mean, it's, it's nothing compared to our life here on earth. When we come to salvation... Through Jesus Christ, we are looking for deliverance to be saved from God's wrath. We're looking to be delivered from God's judgment that is due to our sins. We are looking to be saved from the penalty, the just penalty that we deserve because we are sinners. Listen to the word of God. This is not just because I'm saying it. Or this is just my theory, what I think, what I feel. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the context that he's talking in when he refers to salvation. John 3.36 He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. Do you see the context here? Do you see the contrast? He that believes in the Son has eternal life. He's going to have eternal life with God in heaven. He that doesn't believe the Son shall not see this eternal life, but the wrath of God instead abides upon him. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. God shows his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, listen, we shall be saved from wrath through him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were on our way to hell. We were on our way to be judged. We were on our way to experience the wrath of God. But through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever listen to that with Revelation 2015 and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire do you see what God's talking about here the devil and his angels their end judgment is going to be eternity in the lake of fire, tormented day and night in the lake of fire. But not just them. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into that same lake of fire. Do you see the whole context that God is talking about? John 3.16, one of the most quoted verses in Scripture. God sent his only begotten Son so that whosoever believes in him should have a life of prosperity. So that whosoever believes in him should have everything that he wants. So that whosoever believes in him should be delivered from all trials and all tribulations. Is that what the word says? Is that what this verse really says? I'm, I'm hoping you picked up on that, that that's wrong. John 3.16 says, God sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why God sent his son. We are seeking to be rescued from eternal punishment. That's why God sent his son here. 
That is why Jesus Christ voluntarily gave his life on the cross of Calvary, so you and I could be saved and delivered from the wrath of God, the judgment of God, from eternal separation from God in hell, and so that we could live eternally with God in heaven. That's why Jesus Christ came here. How disrespectful, how self-centered, how selfish it is for us to think that Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross of Calvary, that God sent his son here to suffer and to die so that you and I could simply become wealthy financially, so that you and I could have less troubles while we're here on this planet. Do you really think that's why God sent his son and put him through everything that he, we, he did? To go to that cross and to die for us? So that we could just have a happy time here and all our bills could be paid and we wouldn't have a rough time with it? How far have we fallen? How far have we fallen in our thinking to have that kind of a despicable idea that that's what God sent his son here for? That that's why Jesus Christ gave his life? Salvation is for the glory of God. Salvation is for the deliverance of mankind from the just punishment due to his sins. That's why Jesus Christ, with joy in his heart, gave his life for us. That's why it says that for the joy that was set before him, he willingly did lay down his life and gave his life on the cross of Calvary. You think that joy was Jesus Christ seeing you and me with a big bank account? No. He saw that our sins would be forgiven. God his Father would be glorified. And we could spend eternity in paradise with God. Eternity in heaven. That's why Jesus Christ so freely gave his life. And for no other reason. And if someone is coming to Jesus Christ to be saved from anything else, they're coming for the wrong reasons. And they're not going to receive the true precious gift of salvation. Can God bless in these other areas? Sure he can. Can God make someone wealthy? Sure he can if he wants to. Can God heal? Absolutely he can. If he chooses to do that, he can do that. Can God give the peace that passes all understanding? Absolutely. Not only he can give it, he promises he will. But he also said, in this world you will have tribulation. He also said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. See, we need to properly understand these things. God can bless us, but that's not why Christ came, just for those other things. They're side issues, if you will, if I can refer to it that way. He came so we could have the precious gift of eternal life. Saved, salvation, Savior, all relate to deliverance from God's holy wrath. All relate to deliverance from God's righteous judgment against our sin all relate to being delivered and saved from eternal punishment because of our sin. That's what we need to accurately understand. That's what God is talking about. In our next lesson, we're going to look at two more words that are closely related to each other. Believe and faith. I thank you for watching today, and may God bless you.